Greetings, and before I get started with today's Gwent deck video, I do have a couple of announcements that I would like to make. So I would like to announce that we are nearing 100 subscribers. So once we get to 100 subscribers, I will have a video out for you guys, a special one. Um, and second, I have actually created a second channel for single player uh, walkthroughs. So if you guys want to check out some single player game gameplay, uh, go check it out. A um, couple of games right now that I'm covering are Final Fantasy XII Zodiac Age and Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. So if you guys want to check that out, link will be in the description below. And for the third thing, and that's kind of going into this video, is this is a suggested deck. Uh, this deck was suggested by Sebastian Sorn. Um, I, his comment's gonna be posted here, this, this area right here. Um, that'll be a link. I'll also leave that same link again in the description below if you guys wanna check out his deck guide on it. Um, so he suggests, he has recommended, and this was when I was playing the um, uh, Precision Strike Igni Scoia'tael. This is a Radea version of it. Uh, so it's kind of similar. You have Igni, you have the Precision Strike. Um, good for lining up your opponents for some major hits, um, but you also got, but this is a Radea version, uh, so different cards will be featured on this one. Um, so we're gonna go down through the list, and I'm gonna take you guys over to the gameplay. And before, um, before you guys start getting mad at me or anything like that for what you see in the gameplay, I do not have webcam on, but I do have commentary, so you guys will still be hearing me speak. You just won't be seeing my face. You'll just be seeing the gameplay. Um, so yeah, so. The Great Oak and Vernacial are just two very powerful cards together. Um, Vernacial being able to field that swarm that field with elves and the Great Oak sort of benefiting from that. Um, this I added this one, Feign Death was added. Uh, I don't want to take credit for any point of this deck. This was made by Sebastian himself. Um, so I just want to sort of cover it. And of course, thanks to him for suggesting that deck. Of course, if any of you guys do have deck suggestions as well, you guys can definitely either leave them in the description below and definitely follow me on Twitter or Instagram. And uh, you can message me on any one of those platforms, you know, asking for to cover a certain deck or any deck that you guys think will work or not. Whether it be meme decks, competitive decks, doesn't matter. I'll cover them all. Um, so yeah, so Great Oak, Fane Death, and Vernacial are very expensive cards, but they do work very well. Um, Igni, of course, is there. Uh, it's good to get rid of those really powerful um, units on your opponent's side of the board, or just a bunch with the same power that add up to 20 or more. Uh, Radea herself here is good. She does some pretty good stuff for you, actually, especially with her with your faction stratagem, being able to summon some elves. Um, that can benefit the Great Oak, make it a bit stronger. That can benefit into bringing out Aelorin. So she's actually pretty good for that, and it's also a good setup for Isengrim to get more boosts off on the elves. Uh, so Medea is good for that. Mata is good. Again, you have a bunch of expensive cards. You want to be able to use all of them. Mata is a pretty good way for you to draw, you know, one of... Definitely, you're guaranteed at least one of those three expensive cards out there, which you'll definitely need. You have Maul in your hand, get out Igni. Uh, or better yet, you can even Mulligan one of those, let's say in the first round, if you get them all in the first round. Because uh, you don't want to end up using all your powerful cards in the first round, because what are you going to have in the third round? Nothing. Uh, so yeah, Matai is good for that. Alzor's Double Cross is also another way to guarantee one of your powerful units to come out, whether it be Radea, Great Oak, um, or Isengrim. Uh, you want to have Matai out in your hand. You don't really want it to be drawn out by Alzor's Double Cross because you kind of want them to work separately. Um, but they're still pretty good in thin out your decks and getting out your very powerful cards on the field together. Aelorin is good. You're still going to make swarms of elves regardless, especially with that artifact, and especially if your opponent doesn't have any means of destroying it. Uh, we find that artifacts nowadays, that like people play artifacts where they actually play all um, all three abilities at once. So the kind of the use of playing artifact destroyers isn't as um, prominent as it was before because of you know, the ability for people to just play all three abilities at once. So there's really no sense in doing that. So I actually wasn't expecting any artifact destroyers in the games. And uh, yeah, I didn't get it. So that's good. <laughs> Next, you got Weeping Willow. Good for that harmony. Good for that poison. Um, you probably just want to use it for the poison because your other cards for poisoning here, you got, uh, Dryad Ranger and the King Cobra. So in case they do manage to purify your poison, you do have a couple of backups, but best as possible, I try to play it with a poison anyway. Um, Shield, I guess is okay, but you don't want to have this thing become a target for Vincent from Nilfgaard because Nilfgaard is still a very powerful faction. So you want to be careful of that. Uh, Yaven, again, good for that damage. Um, simply, again, because you're able to create a lot of elves regardless of the fact that most of these you're going to see actually aren't elves. It's now You're now mixing a little bit of harmony, but regardless, it is still pretty powerful. 
Uh, you got Waylay. It's a good six point card if you can pull off its maximum ability. So if you can do a full damage by three, destroy it and summon an Elven Deadeye. Once again, extra Elf uh, for your cards that rely on Elves. And being, it's good to destroy like low power engines on your opponent's side of the field. Uh, Vrihead Dragoon is also pretty good in a, being able to move whether your unit or your opponent's unit. Um, you can stack up for a Great Hound. Uh, sorry, Great Oak. <laughs> you can you can uh, you can prevent a Rolocked enemy unit from activating its abilities, stuff like that. You got options. Uh, Dryad Ranger is that poison, which is good. Uh, Trained Hawk is. I wanted to use Vrihead Dragoon, but then when I saw what the other bronze cost was gonna be, Trained Hawk actually I thought was better. Um, yeah, being able to damage an enemy unit again is still good. It is still harmony, so it does get some good points off of there. I got one unit of Broccolon Sentinel because this is a Radea deck, so Precision Strike does lose a little bit of value because it's one, it's two less power. So instead of it being, I believe it used to be 11 power if you had all three activated, right? Four, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, instead of from instead of 11, it is now nine, but it's still not so bad, especially since you can still line it up with Igni. It is still a very powerful ability. Um, you got Dryad's Karis. Uh, honestly, it's just this is just sort of deck fill at this point. I mean, it is pretty powerful. Potential power of 6 for 4. Um, Mahaka Marauder is always good for that 6 for 4. Again, all these 6 for 4 cards are just really powerful, in all honesty. Um, Dryad Fudging is a card you want to be play in the first round because you don't, you can't really afford to go slow in the third round because this, that's where sort of you want to play all of your you know, very powerful cards and all your good setups. So usually in the third turn, my first play would probably either be Vernacio, if I do have it, or just a card that sets up elves. So yeah, Hawker Healer. Um, it's a good elf to activate artifact with. So usually I you want artifact to be round one. I mean I try to play artifact round one in case you know artifact destroys or a thing because I'd rather have that happen in round one than in round three because if it happens in round three, it becomes way too slow and your opponent just catch up, catches up in uh, power. Uh, so yeah. Blue Mountain Elite is good to- I mean, Blue Mountain Elite usually would be the first turn card because chances are by then your opponent would already have more than one unit on a certain row and like when are you gonna get a chance to play Blue Mountain Elite again? So try to play as early as possible. King Cobra again for that backup poison and Dwarven Skirmisher to... I mean, 5-4-4, not so bad. Um, so yeah. Uh, so that's like the deck. This is the deck <laughs> so suggested to me by Sebastian. Just remember, guys, you can always suggest to me your decks. You can message me on any of the social media platforms that I have. Um, or you can message me on YouTube or put them in the comment section like he did. And yeah, that's the coverage for the Radea Elves uh, deck. And I'll send you guys over to the gameplay. So we have some <laughs> we have some powerhouses here, actually. Um, Hawker support would be nice to have. Dryad Ranger's no good without the Weeping Willow, so we get rid of her. Whaley here isn't so bad. Plenty of crows for me to eat, actually. Um, ADC? Who does ADC get us? Great Oak? Yes. Uh, I want to keep Dryad's Karis. I need more elves. Yeah, there we go. I actually prefer that. I actually prefer that. Yeah, you want to have Feign Death. I, I would play Feign Death first personally, just simply because of my of, if my opponent does have artifact removal. Not to mention, we still have some pretty powerful cards for the third round. We got um, Great Oak, Radea, Isengrim if we keep them, Vernacio if we can draw them. Uh, I chose to mulligan Vernacio just simply because I don't really want to end up using him in the first round. Um, the opener here might actually end up being Feign Death. Yes, we might have to go with Feign Death. Uh, he might think we'll have some sort of counter- or he, he might think that we'll have, um... Hey, he has my name, that's cool. He, he might think that, um, he has, uh, uh, that we have Caretaker. He might think that. That's fine. Um, I don't want to activate Artifact yet. I might just go Dwarf. Purify. I guess he's uh, prepared for um, he's prepared for statuses, which is a good idea because poison right now is absolutely incredible. It is incredible, and I mean that in both bad ways and good ways. Crow mother. There's the target for Wele. Um, I know that uh, Clan Dread Maiden's a thing, so we do get rid of this actually. 
If we wanted to, we could activate Great Oak like right now. But we might obviously we'll save it for a little bit later. We could even use Yaven to even get rid of this armored Drakkar. Um Oh my goodness. I should have put Feign Death in the range row because I forgot, like, I didn't realize most of my units are actually more better in the melee row as of right now. He might think that we're setting up for, like, Great Oak or something. I can help you if you wish. Yeah, that's fine. Is he gonna try and get that very rare Crow Messenger? The third or fourth Crow Messenger? Nah, just a Crow Clan. That's all good. Okay, hey, so. He's not too far ahead still. We can still activate it. I do not have a Dryad, so Dryad's Karis isn't going to do so much here. Well, we will do Hawker Healer, actually. Man, they're, they're, all, they're all in the melee row. It's unbelievable. Yeah, I think we, we I think we can push him. Um, Yaven can do major damage. Uh, he hasn't played a Crow Clan Druid yet, which is oh sorry, not a Crow Clan Druid, uh, it's Val Blood Priest, uh, which is in some way surprising. Um, but if he does play one, Yaven can and will destroy it. Well, I don't know if it will destroy it, but because I might choose it to attack something else. We have Harold Hounds not in this deck. That's interesting. Guess he wants those those points, huh? Um, he could waylay. I mean, it's it's not gonna do much in terms of like point swings. Uh, we could do Dryad's Karis actually. It's not much. It's not much. Yeah, that's fine. They grimace this early, huh? Interesting. That's kind of interesting, actually. Uh, let's play Yaven and push him. Actually, maybe Harold was better. <laughs> maybe the Harold was better. That's okay. I mean, I could try to activate Great Oak right now if I wanted to. Um, but I don't want to lose even more of my strong weapons because I already have... I've kind of already expended enough from this. Yeah, at least we got him to use Triss. So that's not so bad. I will not let this become a second Sodden. So I think we, we we I think we do pass here. Um, I don't think there's any more sense in going. I mean, I could hit the waylay on that, but if he passes, I mean, I'm not gonna be able to play anything else really. So it doesn't make sense to do that. Um, so I think we do just end up passing here. Yes, because I do want to keep these three cards. I do want to keep the other three cards. I wanted to get rid of waylay, but. Just based on what cards I wanted to keep, it just wasn't worth it, you know? If we can get Vernacio, that'd be a very good card, actually. Okay, we got- hold on. Okay, we got Great Oak. So who does double uh, ADC get us now? The Weeping Willow? Uh, so we probably have to get rid of- we, ha we definitely have to get rid of something. Um, because he's gonna dry pass. We're gonna get rid of Great Oak. And Waylay. Yeah, I think Dryad Ranger is okay here, actually, to get rid of. There's no way he plays that. Oh my gosh, he's gonna play this out. Okay. Alright, that's fine. Actually, you know what? That's not so bad for us. That's not so bad for us. Um, I could play Dryad Ranger to lure the poison. Maybe I just play Mata. I don't know how much he's going to try and push, that's the thing. 
your sorrows. Actually, you know what? This is fine. Actually, this is fine. Um, we got Dryad Ranger. Now, Alzer's Double Cross get us the second poison, which is actually good for us. So we do want that happening. Uh, now we find out here if he has... If he has Sigdrifus right. Because you, you can use Second Wind on Gremist, but... I don't think it's gonna... Well, I wouldn't say if it's gonna be enough, but... It'll be enough to get rid of the poison. But we'll see what we'll see what he does. Okay. I mean, he could bring it back for... Okay, fair enough. I mean, he can bring it back with, um... I'm already forgetting. Uh... Freya's Blessing. But I mean, even then, it's not gonna get him, like, the most points in the world. So... I mean, it's like, I'm not too threatened by it, I suppose. I need an Igni target very soon. Otherwise, I'm gonna be in trouble. I think it has to be Radea, right? Yeah, it's gonna have to be Radea here. We have to really be ahead on points here. He might play his, um... Yeah, he might play his artifact very soon. But I mean, we have the cards we need to beat him still. If he does decide to push us. But it's just a matter of like the third round. Like, what's gonna happen in the third round then? So he is trying to make a big push. Okay, no, that's fine. Um, we'll do Isengrim. As much as possible, I want to I want to reserve Vernathiel for that Great Oak. Okay, that's actually good for us. Uh, 15... 16, 17, 18, 19. So we do need to ping this. So it'll go up to 7. And it'll be just enough. Let's get this over with. Okay, so his last card is definitely going to be... Um... The like artifact. The last card is artifact. Oh no, he chooses to pass on it. Okay, that's actually... That's not so bad for us. That's not so bad for us, actually. We have a chance. The Great Oak just needs to be very powered. Um, who's this useless here? Train Hawk wouldn't be a bad idea to have here. Actually, maybe not. I don't know. I don't know which is the best case scenario. We got it. Blue Mountain Elite is not going to do anything for us here. It really won't. Yeah, Waylay is not so bad. Um, yeah, I don't think it gets any better than this. It doesn't get any better than this. I know his last card's Artifact. That's why I didn't want to play it. Or maybe it isn't. Maybe he just didn't have artifact. And there's Crow Messenger. Oh boy. Ooh, does he not have an artifact? Uh, he doesn't have an alchemy in his hand. Uh oh. Alright, this, this is going good for us actually. This is going good for us. I mean, that artifact's still gonna be a crap ton of points, but... I mean, I'm hoping it's not gonna be enough. Marching orders. That's actually very interesting. Accept our sacrifice. Aim between the eyes. Leave none alive. Okay, that's fine. Um, I think I have to play Great Oak. Yes. Or maybe I'll- uh, I don't want to put it- The thing is, if I put in the- Actually, yeah, no, range throw is fine. It doesn't do much, but... This has to be Artifact, right? Otherwise, he's not gonna win. Because my last card is Great Oak. Has to be Artifact. Let's just see it. Yeah, okay. So, this is gonna be a potential 30-point play. I mean, he does summon Crow Clan Dr Oh, wait, no, he might get the uh, Rizomi. No, no, he's not. He, oh, he's choosing Freya's Blessing. Okay. Oh, yeah, he does get the Crow's Eye Rizomi. Right. But he doesn't have Crow Clan Drift, so he can't really boost it. That's fine. 
Okay, now I'm a little bit worried. This, this is literally where Skellige gets so much value. Oh my gosh. This is actually insane. Um... Uh, will this be enough? One, two, th one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Okay. I think it was. I think it was gonna be enough anyway. So. Okay. So I don't want a hand like this where it's mostly bronzes. Oh, uh, well, that one has to be gone. Um, he does go first, so we will hit whatever with Blue Mountain Elite. Dwarves are here, which is fine. Yeah, I'm. I'm actually okay with this. This is enslave, huh? Okay. This might not be so easy to go through because I don't have purify. That's the that's another problem is I don't have purify. And I don't have artifact either, so I mean this is gonna be a bit of a problem. I must admit. I must admit this will be a problem. We do have the poisoners, so we will be okay with this. Well, that thing's just gonna get boosted, so... I mean, it might as... I mean, it's gonna be the only unit in its row no matter what. So, you know what? Let's, let, let's actually hit it. And then, after it gets to its third turn, we will hit it with Waylay. Good Swears? Actually, he wouldn't Swears. Okay, Battle Prep. So, he probably suspected we had something in mind. Can you smell it? Victory is on the wind. That's fine. FD Helga? Oh boy. Uh, let's attempt to poison this. Let's see if he, um... I mean, he purifies it. He gets rid of the, uh... The shield. So that's not so bad for us. Let's see if he tries to purify it. If he does, then maybe we'll just leave it alone. Okay, so he's... Oh, wait. If he gets sappers, then yeah, he can definitely purify. Okay, not happening. Cool. I guess he's just going for that massive damage. Huh? At this point, we're essentially just trying to bleed him. Wow, Yennefer's invocation already? That's interesting. Well, it'll be 13 to 7. Um, we still need to try and overcome a 5 point difference, which is going to be tough. 15 to 8 will be waylay. I guess we'll do it. I mean, he's gonna do it under the assumption that overcoming 5 points is gonna be easy. But he's also seen that we're not committing, so that could be the downfall of this game. I mean, Yennefer's invocation was a big um, commitment. Because usually you'd want to save that for like the Great Oak, but then again, Great Oak never comes till round 3, so I can see why he probably wouldn't use it. He's thinking about passing here. And if he does, I'm gonna be in some trouble, actually. Trouble. Okay, good. Alright, that's good for us, actually. He might try to go the long round three. Okay, well, we, we, we got the artifact, but, um, whether you want to play it or not, no idea. I mean, we can't even complete it. Actually, we can't complete it. We got Hawker Healer and Yaven. 
So if he does, if he chooses not to pass, we will play Fain Death here. If he does decide to pass, we will play Hawker Support. And he has the Weeping Willow, so you must have the Cup Bearer for poison. Or, uh, um, yeah, I can't think of it. I'm trying to think of the card name. The, uh, the 4-4 four four that has poison. I can't remember the name. I don't play, I haven't played Stats so far. No, ever. We'll see what he does. Good pass. Good not. So we will play Hawker Healer. Okay, so long rounds actually do very well for Igni, so I like that. Um. Okay, I'm not too big of a fan of... Okay, Radea can come out with... Get rid of the Fledgling, we don't need it. Uh, Raihead Dragoon's not so bad. Remove. Um, I don't want to brick into the... Into either Adrian or Broccolon. I think that's too big of a risk. So I think I will just keep this. He does have poison, so I have to be careful about poison. It's unfortunate. Um, we put artifact here, yes. Yeah, because most this is most of our units are Rolock. So if he has false theory and destroys it, so be it. Um, it's fine. I don't think he's gonna have it. Uh, just simply because of how um how decks tend to run nowadays. Like most artifacts tend to be able to get their whole abilities off in one go. So oh, that's actually good for Wele. I don't mind that happening. I actually, believe it or not, I find that Wele more valuable than Swears because if he has a card like Bribery and he draws like an Isengrim from it, that extra boost might actually cost me the game. So it's like, I can't really afford for that to happen, if that makes sense. I know. Is this bribery? This is probably bribery. A clever maneuver. Oh, it's Royal Decree. Okay. Probably has bribery in his hand then. Into Glynis. All right. Now we're gonna have some. Actually, now we're gonna have some fun. I'd rather have. I'd rather damage actually. play Yavin next? Probably not though. He's not gonna enslave this early. There's no way. Avalok. Ooh. This might sting a little bit. Okay. That's fine. That's not so bad, I guess. This one will be damaging though. Um... Hmm. Do I play Yaven now? Maybe we play Yaven now, right? I mean, it doesn't get any more powerful than this anyway, so what's the point? Because I'm- <laughs> I could play Vryhead Dragoon, but it- there's no point as of right now. I mean, we could use it to move our our allied unit later, so yeah, maybe we will just do this. Actually, it's, he'd be doing us a favor by um, moving this down, so that's not so bad. This will actually be okay for us. This will be okay for us for sure. We picked up a lot of tempo on him, which is actually what we want. So this is a Radea deck, huh? That's interesting. Try, try, he's trying to clear the board. He's trying to clear the board. With me, you'll forget your sorrows. 
Oh yeah, I forgot I forgot Mata gets Redea, and now ADC gets us Isengrim. Actually, no, that's a that's even better for us. That's way better for us, actually. Now we need a target. Well, now we need a um, target for Igni. So if he has an assimilate, or sorry, if he has a create, and then ooh, okay. This is gonna be awkward, though. This is gonna be awkward as heck. I really want to target all of them. Well, unfortunately, Mata actually does have to go. So we can't do anything about that. Um, I think we you might as well just play Redea here, right? Yeah. Actually, we'll put her... Because she's going to get poisoned too. Actually, we'll put in the main range row. Oh, all these cards are disgusting. Disgustingly bad. Oh, actually, you know what? Crystal Skull's not bad. I mean, it's probably gonna get destroyed anyway, but at least we kind of slowed it down a little bit. So he'll have that one extra poison card that might not do anything. I mean, he might have saved it for the Purify, which I guess is good for him. Thanks to the Empire. That's the name I was looking for. Honestly, that's fine. I'm still good here. Um, maybe we play Vernacio first. I thought about playing Isengrim here, but not yet. I want to do something about this. Um, I mean, I I want to find a way to get all of, all of them destroyed, but it's like, it's not likely. Actually, that, that might do it. Actually, that might do it. Yeah, th this actually might do it here. Not your lucky day. So we lined them up there relatively well. And then now you play Wap Wimp Weeping Willow, not Whomping Willow. That's a different that's a different fantasy world. <laughs> that's fine if you get rid of Verdea. Now we get now we get Isengrim out here. Three, six, yeah, this is fine. No mercy! And we still have hero power, so I think we're good. Bribery. Oh wow, another another one. That's tough. I mean, I play Isengrim. Uh, I play Vryhead. He gets the Isengrim off. I mean, at this point, it doesn't matter. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, no. I think we have to get off Great Oak now, right? Yeah, we great we get off Great Oak now. Hey! So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then we'll use this to get rid of maybe a. Um, cause I don't want to get us. I don't want to get boosts. Like, if I feel like if I boost the Great Oak too much, it gets destroyed. I mean, it's gonna be a 35. Yeah, that's fine. Right, his last card is probably gonna be Vincent, though. Eyes closed, mouth. Yeah, his last card is probably a Vincent. Slaughter them to a man! So he needs to be 23. It is a big deficit, but I don't know. I mean, yeah, no, I don't think he beats it. That's a that's that's probably a bit too much, yeah. Alright, awesome. Those were some actually pretty good games.